So now going on to some example calculations. Um, our first example will be a simply supported beam, um, as shown here. We're going to use a 362 S137-54 section. Um, that's how you're usually going to see a cold form steel section written out. Um, the first three numbers, 3.362, means a web height of 3.625 inches. The S refers to a C section. Um, you'll also see a Z for a Z section, a U for an unreinforced C section. Um, or an unstiffened C section, excuse me, um, or a T for track section. Um, the next three numbers, 137 refers to the flange width, that's 1.375 inches in this case, and the dash 54 refers to the thickness, so 54 mils is your thickness, or nominal thickness anyway. Um, many sections may be available in both 33 KSI and 50 KSI um, strengths, uh, custom manufacturers can also potentially do other strengths as well, but 33 and 50 are the ones that you will see frequently. Um, and because sections may have multiple uh, standard yield strengths available, you'll often see uh, the yield strength listed along with the section name as well. So we're going to assume a simply supported beam in an office building with a dead load of 15 PSF, live load of 40 PSF. Um, seven feet, two inches long, that's 86 inches. Uh, we're gonna assume a 16 inch on center spacing for our purlins, um, so 16 inch tributary width. Uh, we'll assume no transverse shear reinforcement for now, um, and assume that we have uh, lateral bracing at 24 inches on center, and no, no additional torsional bracing. So I'm going to go into uh, clear calcs to show the example um, as to how this works here. To show how you go through these equations. So logging into clear calcs at clearcalcs.com. Um, I'll create a new project. Just call it webinar for now. Um, project number, client name, and whatnot are optional. Um, and then I'll add a new calculation. We offer a number of different types of calculations, uh, timber, steel, cold form. I'll select cold form steel beam. And uh, you'll see uh, all of the calculations open up here um, and calculated live. So I said this was a 362 S137. Um, dash 54 at 33 KSI section, 86 inches long uh, with 24 inch on center uh, lateral spacing or lateral bracing. Um, and uh, 15 PSF dead load, 40 PSF live load. We're gonna assume that occurs over the full length of the beam. That will all get calculated out here, and you can see that our most, limited, most limiting factor is deflection here, where we're at 82% of our limit. Uh, we set our limit to L over 360. Um, other capacities end up, uh, are listed here. Um, our negative moment demand is zero because this is a simply supported beam. Um, and you'll see the shear, the web crippling, um, and combined bending and shear, combined bending and whip crippling values. All the calculations are done below here with um, load, all of our load combination analysis, uh, checking every possible load combination listed in ASC 7 in this case. Um, unfactored loads, we only have dead and live loads, so everything else is zero in here. And uh, Within these calculations, we're going through and calculating out for you what the yield moment capacity, plastic moment capacity, global buckling. Um, you can turn on and off uh, in elastic reserve capacity. Um, though this section is uh, unable to make use of it because it buckles before it yields. 
local buckling calculations, distortional buckling calculations, um, shear capacity, web crippling. Um, web crippling, we're going to calculate for you for each individual support, and you will need to do that as well. It has to be calculated uh, because it depends upon bearing length and location of your support. It needs to be done individually for each support, and hence you'll see in the two rows um, up at the top here for uh, where we specify our uh, support locations. And then combined bending and shear and combined bending and web crippling. Um, we will allow you to uh, also look and see what all of the equations are used in this. Um, so for example, the yield shear force uh, is equal to 0.6 times AW times FY. Um, and the exact equation reference, uh, G2.1-5 in AISS 100. Um, so go through all that calculation and you end up with uh, shear, bending, and deflection envelopes as shown there. Um, load, uh, load diagram looks similar to what you saw in um, my sketch in the slide as well. And again, section works. So then going back to a second example with a more complex beam. And this beam has three different supports um, and a cantilever on one end as well. Um, we're gonna assume the same level of loading, so we're not focusing on that as a detail here. Um, and uh, spacing between the first section, the first uh, two supports of 72 inches, between the second set of supports of 120 inches, and that leaves us with a 24 inch cantilever. We'll end up needing to use a larger cross section here. Um, we're going to use an S162, uh, so it has a slightly longer flange width of 1.625 inches um, and a uh, 68 mil thickness um, at 50 KSI to make this one work. But I will plug that in and uh, demonstrate exactly how that can work. So to make life a little easier, since our loading and such is the same, I'm just going to duplicate the existing sheet that I had just created. Um, the overall length of my beam um, is uh, 196 inches. Alternatively, you can also enter that in uh, using um, formulae, so equals 12 times uh, times uh, 16. Um, For, ah, sorry, 196 is my length, not 192. Um, we have restraints uh, for torsional bracing. We assumed at 48 inches, and for lateral bracing and positive um, at 48 inches. So modify those values. And then our first support we said was at 72 inches. Second support at uh, 192 inches. Um, that's 120 plus 72. And then that leaves us with a little bit of a cantilever on the end as well. Um, sorry, I did my math slightly wrong there. It's uh, 210 uh, inches is my total length give us our cantilever on the end. And I'll assume bearing lengths of 1.5 inches for everything as well. Um, so that ends up with uh, shear bending moment and deflection diagrams as shown here for our uh, envelopes. Um, we can see this looks uh, pretty similar to, again, the diagram on the other page. Um, I have not changed the section yet. So you can see that the uh, old section, the S137-54, does not work here. Um, we can quickly see what sections do and do not work um, in a member selector that will open up here. This shows uh, what does and does not work and how every section fails. So I'm going to specifically go to a uh, 360 2S162, uh, 
dash 54. Um, so I'll open up that one uh, at 33 KSI first. Um, and you'll see in this case that web crippling and uh, bending moment actually governs here and prevents the 33 KSI beam from working. So this is why you'll sometimes have sections that exist in both 33 KSI and 50 KSI strengths. Um, and this is an example too of uh, web crippling actually governing our design here. But if we just bump that up to a 50 KSI yield strength instead, um, now that will work. Um, and you'll see that MP value drop down to 82%. Still our governing strength, but now the uh, calculation works. Um, and now we're within capacity. So those are our two examples that, uh, to quickly go through there.